Hi guys, I'm Shay. I have so much energy today, so- Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> I'm Shay. I have so much energy today. I'm super hyper and I thought I would just film this video because I have so much energy I need to put it into something. So hopefully this video just inspires you because it's gonna inspire me. It's gonna inspire you. I guarantee you. I guarantee you it will inspire you. Today's topic, I'm gonna be talking to you about how to level up for 2025. That is right, 2025 is coming up very quickly. And I wanna get to you guys before the New Year's crowd, before everybody tells you to change your life, your personality, how you dress, how you how you how you speak, how you do everything. I wanna be there for you. And I am here to tell you that you can start before January 1st. So here is your inspiration. So you guys know that time of year, January 1st. New Year's resolutions, everybody's like, I'm gonna change myself, I'm gonna change how I act, how I dress, how I eat, all that stuff, okay? You're just like a whole factory reset of your body. I feel like people really like those resets because they're like, I have potential, I have the motivation, everybody else is doing it around me, I can do it too. But I find like by February, everyone kind of falls off, they lose interest, even by January 2nd. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, I feel like people just fall off. I wanna make this video because I don't want you to fall off. I want you to actually succeed this year. And if this is the video that's going to tell you to do that, keep watching, all right? Make sure you hit that like button. We're gonna be leveling up in 2025, but we do not need to wait till 2025 to start. Any day can be a time to start, okay? You can start now, you can start tomorrow. The fact that you are starting is the initial part that is important. You clicked on this video, so clearly you have something to change or to improve about yourself. So what I wanna do is sit down. I want you to envision the man or woman that you are trying to be. What does that higher self look like to you? What does she eat? What does he do? Does he have an exercise routine? Does he have a meal prep routine? Does he have a full-time job? All that stuff. I want you to envision that, and I want you to keep that in mind throughout this entire video. That is your higher self and it is you you were going to see in that position. It's not somebody else. I want you to see you as your higher self. I want you to take a look at what activities does that person, man or woman, do. Do they meal prep? Do they work out? Do they have a full-time job? They're never late for work? All that stuff. And I want you to align yourself with that higher self. Now, the key point that I wanted you to take home was that you're not idolizing someone else. You're idolizing yourself. So that's why I said to you, envision yourself as a higher self. I don't want you to kind of have an image of of this other person that you want to be the key thing is to envision yourself as that person so when I for example when I see my higher self she goes to the gym five days a week she eats healthy she meal preps she has her full-time job she's successful she has motivation she's got a promotion she has a car things like that but I don't envision myself like oh I'm Holly Berry she got a mansion she got a house you see the difference now you can't sit here and envision yourself as having a full-time job if you ain't apply for nothing you know what I mean that th that position ain't gonna just land in your lap you need to do some work so apply for those positions put yourself out there feel that fear of that unknown or the uncertain the unpredictable you need to actually put in the work if the person that you envision goes to the gym full time you actually need to have a gym membership you need to sign up for the gym uh you're not going to teleport there right you need to have a plan in place so figure out what gym you're going to go to which one is closest to your house easy access when are you going to go in the morning or in the evening what are you going to wear what are you going to bring what machines are you going to use stuff like that have a plan Plan. I'm telling you, planning is the key. Discipline is doing the things that you may not want to do because it may not benefit you in the short term, but in the long term, it will benefit you. For example, going to the gym five times a week is going to benefit me in the long run because my health, helping me with my self-esteem, my mental health, all that, these are benefits that I gain. Now, this is going to bleed into my next point. So you need to develop routines in all areas of your life, not just a morning routine. I know those have been flooding YouTube lately. I want you to have a morning routine because that is how you start off your day productive productive, feeling like you have something to do. But I also want you to have an evening routine. Many of my friends that I speak to, they don't have an evening routine. They don't prioritize sleep, you know, and then you, they kind of wonder like why they wake up groggy or why they feel like crap or why their work day just doesn't go as they want it to because they're irritated. It's things like that. Things like sleep trickle into all areas of your life. So for me personally, I have insomnia. So I try to go to bed early, nine o'clock, have a whole evening routine, you know, make my bed, make sure everything's nice and cozy. The lighting is right. I prioritize my hygiene have a nice shower and this just relaxes me and tells me that it is about to be time to go to bed i also try to limit my screen time before bed i mean we all do it we watch a movie we're on our phone now i try to replace my phone with a book it is so easy to just reach for the phone but it's a challenge to reach for a book and i remember i just kept making excuses like oh well i can't see at night that's why i can't read or like my eyes are bad i can't read you know or like i don't have time so what i started doing was first of all getting a light in my room so i can read my book reading earlier, bringing my book 
to places. So for example, bringing my book to work. So when I'm bored, whip it out. The same way I could whip out my phone and just start scrolling, I can read a book. Taking my book to the gym. You can do cardio, whip through like a whole hour of cardio reading your book. That is me prioritizing reading because that was a goal for me. But I have to align myself with that goal. I can't just think that I'm just going to magically just start reading. I have to put in the work. I brought the book to multiple places and I told myself this is going to replace my phone and screens. I have a meal prep routine. So I meal prep every single Sunday or Saturday. So I go grocery shopping on the Saturday morning and then I will come home meal prep. If you are struggling to find ideas, go on Pinterest. That's how I find my ideas. So I just type in the type of protein that I want, for example, chicken or shrimp. And it gives me a bunch of recipes. Very visual. You can even search easy recipes. I've been cooking for a while, so I'm pretty experienced with like seasonings and how I want to cook something. All I need is the visual image of the dish I want to make and I can chef it up. There are so many channels here on YouTube that does meal preps. There's meal prep services if you, if you don't want to cook or you can't cook. Um, if you can't cook, definitely put that on your vision board to learn how to cook. Try some new recipes. I'm telling y'all, you will feel so much better knowing that you cooked a hearty home cooked meal versus buying food. Personally, me, I know that if I don't meal prep, I will just be eating junk food. I will be eating out. I make sure my meals are nice and prepped. No guesswork. I just have to eat it. So I want you to eat foods that make you feel good. No more junk food this year. I know you want to have some treats. That's fine. But I want you to do like the 80-20 rule. So I want you to eat foods that are more whole foods, fruits, vegetables, which are going to be mainly in the front portion of the grocery center. So like the fresh fruits that you would put into little bags, stuff like that. A goal that I had for myself this year was to prioritize having a portion of fruits or vegetables with every single meal. For example, when I do my meal preps, I like to chop up some vegetables. The easiest for me would be carrots and some bell peppers or maybe some broccoli and that just ensures that I have some sort of vegetable in my body then the next thing I will have is a source of protein so you can have so many things for protein okay chicken shrimp steak tofu there's so many different types of meat all you have to do is learn how to cook it there's even pre-prepared foods if you do not know how to cook but i like to have a source of protein carbs vegetables and some sort of fruit that's what i do when i pack my lunches to go to work because obviously i don't have my kitchen at work and i just make sure that i eat healthy i also have little snacks throughout the day so that in case i get hungry i don't have to pay for anything i have it in my bag sneak a little oreos in there mm. You know what I'm talking about. I have been meal prepping for years and it has worked wonders. I'm telling you right now. I like to obviously plan my meals out. So I go on Pinterest, find some recipes, visual, visualize the dish. It just depends on what inspires me. I typically get bored with my food. So I like it to change every two weeks. So I will find what I want to make. I set one day of the week to make my food. So I'm going to get the groceries early in the morning on Saturday morning, and then I'm going to come home and prepare the produce or anything like that, cut up the veggies, marinate the meat, and then I'm going to cook it and then prep it out into tiny takeout containers so that I can have lunches for my office days and when I'm at home. Having a meal prep routine is going to develop discipline. To be healthy, to be the person that I envisioned, I need to meal prep. I can be tired, I can be cold, you know, I don't want to do it. But I still do it because I know my week of success is dependent on this one day. So the way I look at it is if I invest this time now, I'm not going to get a benefit in the short term, but in the long term, I will. So this week I'll have nice, healthy, prepped meals. I'm going to feel good about myself. I'm going to feel healthy. I'm not going to spend extra money. So to me, that is worth it. So that's what I tell myself when I'm not feeling like doing the meal prep, but I know I have to. So I saw the thing on Reddit and it's not my idea, but they said have no zero days. So what that means is have days where you actually feel productive. Don't have days where you do nothing. So if you get up, you're like, okay, not feeling great. Do something to make yourself feel productive. So for me personally, when I get up from bed, I like to make my bed. That's one thing I can check off my list, bed made. And then I like to tidy up a bit in the morning. You don't have to do things that cost a lot of energy. You can go for a quick walk. You can cook a nice healthy meal. Don't just sit down and just rot in bed. That one productive thing is gonna trickle into other things. So I kind of touched on this earlier, but you want to keep your spaces clean. When I'm feeling down or I'm feeling really anxious, I look at my spaces and I look at them. Are they cluttered? Is it dirty? Do I keep waking up to a messy room? What could be affecting my mood? And nine times out of 10, it's the fact that my environment is messy and cluttered, which is causing my mind to be messy and cluttered. I personally feel like when you have a fully clean environment, you are going to feel good. Do you know that feeling when you clean up something and you just stand there and you look at it and you're like, oh, I wonder how other people 
people will see this and you feel good about yourself that's the feeling i want you to feel i want you to feel good like that every day have routines in your life so i have a deep cleaning routine which i film on my channel if you want to watch them where i make a list of everything that i would like to clean it changes sometimes i have things that i clean weekly i have things that i clean monthly so the bigger things i'm gonna save for the month but in the week i have things that i can just clean that are tiny you know like tidying up the bathroom wiping down the kitchen sink sweeping the floor making sure there's not clothes on my bedroom floor little things like that that can save you from having to have it build up and then eventually becoming like this large task i'm gonna give you the advice if you have a large list of things to do separate it into large things and smaller things what you're gonna do is when you are motivated and you have energy invest it into doing those larger tasks so for example if i need to deep clean my entire room a large task if i need to wipe down the sink that's a small task so i'm going to tackle cleaning my room first get that out of the way check that off if you're a visual person make your list check it off and then because i've spent the energy on this large task if i don't have the energy to say wipe down the sink i'm not going to feel as guilty about it because i know it's a small thing it requires a small amount of energy and i can do it later i know that some people like to finish the small task first and leave the big task but i know myself and i'm going to feel super guilty if i finish all the small things and i still have this huge task looming over my head and i can use a personal example so during the winter season summer season transition we like to put away our summer clothes take out our winter clothes like I got this nice fluffy sweater that task had been looming on my mind for a long time because I knew it was going to take a lot of time a lot of effort for me that was a huge major task every single to-do list that I had made it was right at the top <laughs> okay clean out the closet declutter I kept avoiding it for so long long and I kept doing the small little tasks and it just seemed like I would never get to that big task right so at one point I just said to myself you know what no we need to switch something up this is not working so I tackled that big task first got it over with and I felt so good and guess what I was motivated to do everything else that I had to do throughout the day because I didn't want to leave it another point I'm going to tell you which kind of coincides with the point I just made split your tasks up into things that are smaller so for example when I say deep clean my whole room that could mean a lot of things I like to split my task into individual things. So deep clean my whole room, but then on the list, it's going to be like clean my pillowcases, wash my sheets, sweep the floor, mop the floor. It makes the list look longer, but then I feel more satisfied checking off those small individual little things. Whereas if I waited to clean the entire room, which could be a vast majority of things, I'm not going to be able to check that off until like the end of the day. So if you are a very visual person, you need constant progress checks, split your task into like smaller items, check them off, check, 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 and you're good to go the last tip i'm going to tell you is to prioritize sleep now like i said in the beginning i have a lot of friends who complain that they're groggy and they're irritated and their work day didn't go well and they're wondering why and it's because they spent all night scrolling on pinterest you know what i mean prioritize your sleep now i have insomnia so sleep for me is very inconsistent but what i like to do is go to bed every single night at around nine so i have a whole routine i dim the lights i turn off my plant lights here you know i make myself nice and cozy i do something nice and relaxing i also shower with like a dim light and it really helps me just get into the mood of bedtime light really affects your mood and your circadian rhythm telling you that it's time to go to bed i also take melatonin so that i can get a full night's sleep prioritizing your sleep going to bed early you do not realize how much sleep affects your life it trickles into everything if you have a bad night's sleep the next day your workout is affected your mood is affected you can't work you can't focus now you're hungry you're craving junk food because your whole system your hormones are out of whack because of your sleep and i know people just feel like well i don't really Really want to go to bed early i don't see the benefits i'm telling you have a good night's sleep and see how well you feel then compare it to how shitty you feel when you don't there's so many things that you can do to get a good night's sleep now for me personally for insomnia here's some tips that i do so i listen to i mean it's not the best thing but i listen to scary stories and i find that just focusing on something else besides the anxiety or like the day it helps distract me so it helps me go to sleep now obviously if you don't want to watch scary stories anything spoken word another thing is reading before bed you know obviously having something that is not stimulating when you are looking at a screen the entire time the light is telling your body it's time to wake up so you are telling your body to stay up and that's why you have a hard time going to sleep so do something that is not very stimulating before bed not too loud something calming meditation maybe prioritize your sleep so that's it for the tips on how to lock in and just focus this winter see how you can level up i really encourage you to level up before the new year's because i guarantee you it's going to be very overwhelming if you want leave in the comment section your goals for this year let's hype each other up feel like we can provide some motivation for each other let me know some topics you want me to talk about down below thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye guys Thank you.